Tony DeChico. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Canada Tony will try to make amends for their last meeting, that 9-1 loss to the USA. Well, that, that loss in, in Australia, 9-1 to the USA, has seemed to be a catalyst to spring them forward. Since then, they've beaten China. They've had a, uh, a good tournament in Australia and now even a better tournament here in the Gold Cup. So they're playing with renewed confidence. Let's take a look at how these two teams got to the stage. First, for the USA, they've used a lot of players in this tournament. That's a plus, and also they've yet to give up a goal. Well, they haven't given up a goal, but two of those teams are emerging teams. A good defensive uh, result against Brazil. And I think there's a, there's a couple forwards on the Canadian team that will test them tonight. As for Canada, throughout the last game against Guatemala, that was really no competition, but they played two tight ones before it. Right, and the key one here is China. They... They uh, beat them 2-2 after penalties in Australia, but they came back and played them very tough here. So you knew China was ready for them. A 3-2 loss to China. They're an improved team uh, under Pelaru. Well, you will see many of the Canadian players who played in the last World Cup on display, including Charmaine Hooper, Canada's all-time leading scorer. We'll check out lineups and kick this one off from Louisville after the break. The Great Summer Road Show at South Point Chief. IFS, the soccer marketers. By Hyundai from AYSO to the World Cup. Hyundai is proud to support soccer. And by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Back to Louisville, temperature-wise, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, partly cloudy. Second game being played here today, the first game, Brazil. Beat China 3-2 on a Golden Goal PK by Sedinia. Changes in the starting lineup for the United States. Actually, Tony, they're going to make three changes as we present today's starters. Marlinex versus LeBlanc in goal. Right, well, LeBlanc is athletic, probably the most athletic keeper. Can she do it for them? Uh, their other defenders have yet to stop the USA, so they need to see it. The U.S. midfield has one change, Shalanga, and her job is going to be contain Hooper when she comes forward. And the front-running lineup of Milbert, McMillan, and Ham, first time that they played like this since the gold medal game of the 96 Olympics. Your referee is from Colombia, Martha Toto Pardo. And the three players not starting that have started the previous games, Christy Pierce at the back, Lori Fair in the middle, Cindy Pardo up top. Canada in red, USA in white. Coach, how about a couple of keys? Well, the keys for Canada is good goalkeeping. LeBlanc is their most athletic keeper. They've got to contain the USA midfield and not let them serve their front runners. And then they'll get some chances, probably not many. They got to make them work. The USA don't let Bertini or Sinclair, who are the front runners for Canada, get into the game. Make Hooper chase defensively as a midfielder, and then just possess the ball attacking wise. Slayton's throw in near side. Slayton, one of the three changes made by April Heinrich. Here's Milbred. What a cross in the middle. Chested down and lost out for a corner. Touched out by Brianna Boyd. <laughs> Mia Hamm, leading goal scorer in the world of soccer. Getting ready for this corner kick. Mia drives it far post. Kept alive? No. Now a whistle. That was out. Julie Foudy tried her best to keep it in play. Acrobatic, acrobatic move by Julie Foudy and just over the end line. Here comes that serve now. Trying to hit the far post area. Foudy bites it back in, but out of bounds. USA looking for an attack up the middle. Knocked away from Milbert and cleared back. Slayton almost gave that ball away. U.S. will come back after it. Taken away by Canada. On the fly, left side. To the end line, it's crossed, and Mullenix picks it up. Sinclair and Bertini trying to collaborate. JP, what Canada's doing is they got Bertini and Sinclair up top, and they got Hooper right behind them. So she's kind of the free player. Serlinga's got to keep her eyes on her. Canada trying in vain to keep that ball in play. Belongs to the United States. Joy Fawcett back at her normal right back spot. She was playing in the center before, but since Slayton is starting, they moved Chastain over and Fawcett as well. A run to the right for Milbret. And inside, looking for Ham, knocked out for another corner. Well, Joy is very, very experienced. She's going to give a lot of offense coming forward on the outside. And knowing Joy, she's been in the center of defense. 
pretty much a stay home position for a few games. He's looking forward to the runs up and down the flank. Shannon McMillan missed the last game because of a slight knee problem. They just kept her out as a precaution. She gets the start today. A driven ball across. Headed up. Straight by the ball. Julie Friday was pushing up. Well, that's Shannon McMillan's driven corner kick, but LeBlanc athletically makes the play. Here it comes now. Finds Julie Foddy on the backside. And I'm sure LeBlanc, yep, she saved it because they've got another corner given here. This will go out of play for USA throw in. Hams touch into the middle. A crowded area. Canada will clear. Canada, do you have some players that can put the ball in the back of the net? Hooper and Sinclair each with five goals in this competition, and Bertini was a good goal scorer, too. How many chances may they get today? USA with the ball in the Chastain team. Cut over, left side. On the run. Slightly blocked. It has a long way back, but she's got the speed to recover. Charmaine Hooper looks. Get some help. A teammate, the upside flag goes up. Well, Hooper's going to try to find that seam between the midfield and the back player so she can play in that attacking seam. And the USA has to make sure she's always covered. Here's Fowdy with that header. And good early save by LeBlanc. That'll give her some confidence. Canada will clear. This portion of the match being brought to you commercial free by IFS. The right side. Canada will clear. Touched out apparently by the US. April Heinrichs not only is winning this year, Tony, as your successor, but she's used 33 field players and six goalkeepers in one calendar year. Well, she's uh, probing and looking for the best talent for not only this year, but for the future. Cooper's shot is wide of Mullenix. But as usual, the cream rises to the uh, top, and it's pretty much the World Cup team from last summer that is, is you know, going to go into the Olympics in Sydney. Here's a shot, and we don't, I mean, the USA does not want to give up early shots to the Canadians because it'll just give them confidence. Cooper did not play, by the way, in that 9-1 route, followed by Shinsplin, so it's the first time she's been recalled to the Canadian team since the 1999 World Cup and the first time she's been coached by this man, one of your great adversaries from the past. Well, Evan Pellerud is a winner. He, he created a wonderful winning team in, in Norway. They won the 95 World Cup. And a trademark of his team is the mentality, a fighting mentality, a Viking mentality, if you will. When Canada hired him, that showed me they were serious about women's soccer. For the first time, yeah. yes. USA with Sirlinga broken up. Nikki Sirlinga getting an important start today in a semi-final game. Mullenix coming off her line. She played so well against Brazil the other day. Credited with five saves, but remember how many attacks she broke up. She's very comfortable playing in that space behind her defense, and that's critical. Slate sends it up. Canada heading it back up for Charmaine Hooper. Nice ball cut by Hooper. Now to the right side, Canada on the attack, and that's number 12, young Christine Sinclair. She just turned 17, and at the age of 16, was scoring some big goals in big tournaments like the Algarve Cup. Now she's scoring goals again this year as a 17-year-old. She's obviously their future. Off a touch by McMillan. Lead pass intended back for McMillan, didn't get there. Canada trying to clear it up. Off Christina Kiss and out. Christy Lilly on this throw in near side. She's going to give it up instead to Slate, who plays at Santa Clara, where one of her coaches, an assistant coach, is Brandy Chastain. And that's Chastain's spot she's got right there today, left back. That's right. It's a friendly rivalry there. Uh, Danielle has claimed that Brandy helps her all the time. And that's it's a wonderful a quality that Brandy has, even though she's competing for positions to help her out. Lost it. Lost possession. She hurries to get back. Pulled back by Clara Rustad, who's only 17 years old, part of Canada's youth movement. The U.S. will play it up. Last time these two clubs 
met in uh, the United States anyway. Back in Portland, it was 0-0 at the half. LeBlanc played well. And it was 1-0 in a foutie goal about a minute into the second half and a one-goal game until about the 75th. Well, she, I like her. I think that she's something that Canada's needed for a while. You know, the, the goalkeeper that can keep a shot or two out of the net and kind of even the score here a bit. Fawcett is back to track. That first save is, is a perfect indication. Canada looking for some possession early, but Fawcett knocks that away in the air for Srilenka. And that's a tough one. As Milbert was fouled. The foul is on Sidney Walsh, whose sister is the captain of this squad, Amy Walsh, number 13. Here's Cindy going over the top of Tiffany Milbert. And this time the foul goes the other way. It's on the USA, maybe a payback attempt. More of the Gold Cup. In fact, we'll have the final and the third place game coming up for you on Monday. The final, it'll feature Brazil and the winner of this game. Join us from Fox Pro 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ESPN. The worldwide leader in sports. More log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Right now, JP, the ball's up in the air too much. Canada would love to play the game just like this for 90 minutes. The USA has to get it on the ground. They have to be patient, move it side to side, and break down the Canadian defense with possession. Bodies are flying early on here. The USA will try the long ball approach. LeBlanc comes up with it. She plays collegiately out of the University of Nebraska, where several Canadian players have toiled over the last few years. John Walker at the University of Nebraska has done a very good job building a collegiate program and also developing some of the Canadian talent we see out here today. As part of the physical play, Mia Hamm takes so many knocks in the game. Coming back inside the box, but Millen can't get through. Hooper's touch, right side, going long. And it's head right back, Surrey Mullenix. The key for the USA is to get Fawcett and Slayton into the attack with balls timed into their run so they can get into the midfield and even into the final third. The USA looking for the loose ball. They got it from Herstad. Set long by Chastain. Wide to the right. Ham going to the outside. Draws the double team. Gets around that. Whoa! Mia sends it across. A little shove time in Louisville. I think she was watching the Brazilians and saying, I can do that as well. What a little show that Mia just put on. This portion of the match being brought to you. Commercial free by Bud Light. He has scored 12 goals against Canada, more than she has scored against any other nation. 11th minute, scoreless here. And that's going to be too ambitious of a pass for Christine Lilly on that left flank. Off the throw from Marie Clark Dion. Possession is lost. Quick shot, Lilly. Scooped up by LeBlanc. I like the way that Christine looked for her own shot there. There wasn't really a great passing option for her, and she's looking for her own shot. That's, here it is right here. She finds a little opening, hits it right-footed, dipping shot, and the block has a little bit of trouble handling. Back live, Amy Wallace was busting in on Surrey Mullenix. Last year, the number four goalkeeper on the U.S. national team, and now with Scory injured, she's right now number one. Well, Surrey had a very, very good last, uh, year last year. I think there was two players that could have made that World Cup team. Siri Molinix and Ali Wagner. Nice move. Chastain holds. Plays it out of danger. Vicky Serlinga, also out of the University of Santa Clara, sends this ball up long. McMillan settles that. Cuts across. Still cut. She scored goals in six of her last seven games. That was a beauty from Shannon McMillan. Started with Brandy Chastain in defense and finished with Shannon McMillan here. 
sees the open side of the goal, bends it around the keeper. LeBlanc never thought she had a chance for it, never go for it. Eludes one defender, and look at that opening. And look at how she takes it right in under the crossbar. Her 32nd international goal. And her third in this tournament. She created her own shot. What's good about that goal for her is Shannon has a very hard shot. Sometimes she relies on just hitting it through the goalkeeper or by the goalkeeper. That time she hit it around the goalkeeper. And the long pass from Solenga, something that April Heinrich talked about earlier in the week. She wanted Solenga to make those forward passes and stop relying on a lot of the square passes. So that was pretty ambitious on Solenga's part. Well, it was a good ball from Solenga because it went all the way from the right flank all the way over to the left flank where both McMillan and Ham were there to the combination. Near side, Canada getting it back. Lily pushing it back now to Sobrero. Serlinga had the hat trick earlier in this competition. Three goals she scored in that match, game two against Costa Rica. There's a case where she can't play it forward. It's better to play east to west here so she can find those opportunities to play forward. This time Serlinga plays back, lost it. Finds an opening, it's Spouty. Deflected back. Milbert will have a go. She wanted to get in a little bit closer, and Canada stopped that attack. Well, Tiffany saw that she could beat one player. She might be able to get a shot, just overtouched it. Second player cleaned it up. Here's Mullenix with nine shutouts on the year. Terry Mullenix goes long, and in fact, too long. Back for Marina LeBlanc, who's only 20 years old, actually born in Atlanta. Her hometown now, Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Out of the United States, John Kate Sobrero from Notre Dame. Free kick for Canada. And on the referee's whistle. Up it goes inside the box. Deflected out. Corner kick. Canada's first. Brianna Boyd is only 19 years old. It's a very young team for Canada. Hooper being the oldest one out there at 32. Well, Pella Ruth is, is grooming for the 2003 World Cup. Canada is not in the Olympics. He's doing exactly what he needs to do to give these players experience. And he's kind of in all of these great competitions. Play to the middle. It's loose. Canada couldn't find it. Had they found it, they might have been able to slot that one home. There was some confusion there. Sloppy clearing right there by the U.S. They've got to attack that ball. They don't have a Parlo in there that can dominate in the air. They're all going to have to take on that responsibility. Silvana Bertini. Another corner. Strikes it again to the middle. Headed wide. Well, Canada came close to tying it up, thanks to young Christine Sinclair with five goals in this Gold Cup. Those two corners are going to give uh, Canada some confidence because obviously something was taken out of them with the goal scored. Sir Mullenix put it back in play. And she strikes it long. It'll come back her way. Slate. Decides not to play a tour. Instead, it goes off Canada. There's that corner. Lands right in the middle of the USA zone. And uh, Sinclair beats everyone to it. This portion of the match being brought to you commercial free by Hyundai. As McMillan has the game's only goal. It came in the 12th minute. The USA was looking long for Milford instead. It's not a down. Much room there. Canada clears. Sinclair played it back. Now the long ball forward. Mullenix is the closest one to it. Another trademark of a fellow routine is to get the ball forward very quickly. He's, he likes to coach the direct style. Back from a block. Look out there as the U.S. puts on high pressure. McMillan almost won the ball. Now they get the ball on the turn. Oh, no foul. 
This one's cleared away. Here's Hooper. Flex free. Danielle Slayton is back for it. This is only her 17th international. Canada got away with this one because this is the foul. In the first game, that would have been a card and a talking to JP. Different referee, different style. But you're right. Ham goes after it. And in that collision, the foul was called on the United States. Well, the United States has dominated in this series history. We mentioned some 20 straight wins. The last Canada win was back in 1986, but if Canada keeps Pellerud on board, sooner or later, that's going to end. I think you're right. In the 80s, Canada and the USA were very comparable. USA invested in their team. In 91, in the uh, championship game, CONCACAF for the World Cup berth, USA beat them 5-0, and it's really been never looking back uh, since. The USA didn't draw that foul either, and now it's clear. The United States, though, I think you want Canada to be better. You want Mexico to be better, to elevate your game, too, at some point. Absolutely. It's important for our region to be better so we get better competition without having to travel all over the globe to find meaningful matches. Lilly has a tackle away from her. And outside goes Brianna Boyd on the stop. Mia Ham ready on this throw-in. Now she'll give it up to a teammate instead. Danielle Slayton comes out after it. She was coached by April Heinrichs on the under-16 national team, so April knows all about her. Off a flick, LeBlanc's got it. Yes, Slayton has been a part of our youth national team program in the last couple of years. She's been with our U-21s and has really distinguished herself as one of our top future candidates, and I'll tell you what, the future might be this year for Danielle Slate. She'll bring it up. Left-footed ball ahead, and LeBlanc has to scoot back for it. Tenth international for LeBlanc, and the third time she's played against the United States. Long clearance. Chastain sends it up. Canada looks forward at the halfway line. They'll play it back. Towards Boyd. And USA putting some pressure on. It's cleared by Morneau. On the sideline, Canada will play it upfield, deep. Chastain and Molinix. Well, Chastain was yelling towards Molinix, but didn't realize how close she was to her. No, Brandy did what she didn't do in last summer's World Cup. She looked. She saw a series coming. She knew she had to play it. This is a good play by Brandy Chastain. She took charge. Now she knows the goalkeeper's out, and she puts it into about the 15th row of the stands. Ball played in by Canada. Looking for an opportunity as Fawcett blasted up the wing and out of play. Join us on ESPN2 for MLS Extra Time. Join host Rob Stone and analyst Roy Wegley as they take you around Major League Soccer each and every Monday night. Cooper that time getting a slight touch, and Mullenix has it. She's a bit too open in the penalty area. USA has to tighten up on that. Halfway line for Canada, and it's headed out. Not what they intended to do or wanted to do. JP, what Canada is doing is they're playing both Bertini and Sinclair wide and letting Hooper fill into the middle. It's almost a three-front at times. Well, the throw-in coming up for Canada. The USA leads one to nothing. That's Isabelle Morneau. U.S. putting it back, and Canada will clear. Slayton pushing it up. That is touched back by Nobert. Nine players on this Canadian team from the last World Cup. They'll make some changes with the new coach, and Sinclair will be one of those players who will be on the team, the next World Cup team. I already like what Pellerud is doing. He doesn't want Slayton and Fawcett to get forward, so what does he have? He has a, a forward sitting out there in that space, and Char Charmaine Hooper trying to cover the two players in the center. And when they, the ball turns over, they're in, in very good attacking position. USA will get it back. Halfway line. Rowdy picked up. 
Sinclair can't find it. Slayton can. Four found it. Whereas the captain's band with Overbeck injured. Milbert making the run and comes back outside. Half fires it. That is caught by LeBlanc. If there was a rebound, Millen was there on the other side. And that's what she needs to do. She needs to get in there, follow that shot, look for a mistake from the goalkeeper. On his backboard. In the middle, it's Sobrero. Here's the replay. Tiffany stretches Boyd to half clear it. Mia picks it up and looks right to goal. And she's trying to put it over the top of LeBlanc as well. Nearly 23 minutes gone in this first half. USA leads on Shannon McMillan's goal in the 12th minute. At the halfway line, a scramble for that loose ball, and the USA collects it from McMillan. Pushed back. Serlinga. Right puts it across. Foudy. In some traffic. It's played back by Lilly. All the way to the far side. Lily starting to show more for the ball. Played across by the USA off the flick. LeBlanc came out of, I thought, a second late. But it didn't stop her from getting to the ball. Good attack by the USA. Very patient, building, drawing Canada out, and then getting Fawcett in behind the defense. All the way back into the USA end for Mullenix. Winner of this game meets Brazil in the final on Monday. Loser, the third place game against China. What a game we had for you in the first part of this doubleheader. Went down to the golden goal. Sedinia on a PK. Upfield comes Milbert. Has Ham with her. And others. Ham in the box. Getting free. The cross inside. Left there. Shot save the long. That's a good one for Karina LeBlanc, otherwise it's 2-0 U.S. Well, as soon as Tiffany Milford broke into the attack, Mia Hamm pulled herself away from the defense, got herself open, and look at this move. She just fries this defender, and then she finds this seam. This is a wonderful attack. Good save by the goalkeeper. Nice dummy here by Christine Lilly and Tiffany Milford's on it. Tiffany needs to put that away, but still a good save by LeBlanc. One of the things that Lily does so well that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. This is Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky. But Millen with the only goal as the USA leads. Canada's hopes of winning this has to be in a low-scoring game. You're not going to outgun the United States offensively if you're Canada. Not at this stage of their development anyway. Here's the long ball. Headed up. Canada to the near side chasing. Here's Slate. Inside for Hooper. Hooper held off the defender, then Chastain took it. And it's kind of cross. Hooper is a handful to mark. Yeah, that was a, a tug of war between her and Sobrero in the penalty area there. Somehow she's still able to get her foot on it. She's fast, but she's also strong with a lot of points. Here's the U.S. with Fowdy leading the attack. From the right, goes inside of Millen, deflects the body, shot! What? Just got to love the way the U.S.A. is attacking. That run by Tiffany Milburn just tears the defense apart. And a little bit unlucky for Julie's Fowdy shot to be deflected. She should get the corner out of it, though. Unless they change it. Well, they changed it. Now they're going to say goal kick. It's hard to believe this could be a goal kick here, but let's see who it comes off of. No, That's was, clearly off the Canadian yeah. defender. Well, the USA was getting ready for a corner. It got changed. First angle, you could see it better. LeBlanc will put it back in play. Right now, Canada is playing a little bit of Russian roulette because they're letting the game get too open. They're trying to play with a three front, but that means somewhere along in the midfield or in their defense, they're playing even up, and they can't stay with the Americans. Danielle Slate thought she had something going one way, now changed. Canada will get it back, and they'll clear. It'll be a USA throw-in from Chastain. 
Sombrero. Sombrero's clearance. Justin down. It's coming back the other way. Sinclair lifts it offside. Charmaine Hooper. She was clearly offside there, but you know, when you change your defense up a bit, not it, everybody doesn't always move together. And if we see the re replay on this, you're going to see that Joy Foster is starting to recover as, as Brandy's closing. Coming back, USA, looking. Well, Milburn looks around for some foul, which would have been a PK had they been called there. LeBlanc will put it back in play. Milburn, the leading scorer on this team last year with 21 goals. Here it is right here. Tiffany's breaking through. Well, I don't know if she embellished that or if she was taken down. Yeah. Second look, I wouldn't call it. 29th minute. Surrey Mullenix on the ball. She told me earlier today she's under a different kind of pressure. The first pressure she had, can I play at this level and adjust to the international game? Now she says that pressure's off. Her pressure now is, can I continue my success and stay focused? Well, she's got a great concentration to her game. She's a hard worker in practice. Good things are happening to her, and I'm delighted for her. I hope she continues to play at this level. Joy Fawcett. That's broken up. Canada back, but not for long. Sir Linka. Nearly 29 minutes gone. USA leads Canada 1-0 long shot that'll go wide of Karina LeBlanc. Christine had a bit more time than she gave. She, she realized she could have touched it once and ran onto it. I'm sure once she took the shot, she saw that she had some room to uh, maybe get a better shot off. Vegetarians love ham. I mean, you've got to give them a 10 for that sign. Pretty original, it is. Saw some great signs last year during the World Cup. A lot of creative fans out there. LeBlanc clears. USA with the ball with a one-goal lead. Bounty. Try to send it up. USA looking for this ball. Canada, some tough defense there as they clear. Slate brings it down. Sir Lenka. Outside of the foot pass to the left sideline. Good. Cut of the ball from half. Inside the box in the middle. Plays it across. He had a chance to shoot that. As well as find someone else open. Here's the long one. The block stopped that. Well, that shot handcuffed her. She stayed with it. Well, Shannon McMillan broke into the penalty area. He was looking for Christine Lilly on the far side. The ball was cleared to, to Julie Foudy. We had a very difficult dipping volley that almost found the corner. Bodies pass up, a slip or a stumble there for the USA. Here's that volley that Julie Foudy hits. It's dipping. LeBlanc is having to work on this one and uh, covers the corner. This ball is cleared away. While Canada has had a few shots today, none on goal, USA. And that six hit the target. One went in. Mullenix coming out again with her quickness. Siri does that so well, JP. Covering those little balls on, played into the penalty area. Takes a lot of pressure off the defense. She's getting better at it. But she's playing games. Her confidence, she said, and her timing much better now game to game. You're talking to some of the players, they're very confident with Siri in there, and that's always a great feeling for, as a goalkeeper. line this ball is pushed back Hooper Canada trying to play it into his space instead they've got to defend USA comes back a lily pass to Phillip Bowdy back for Christine Lilly showing up all over the field and that time she draws a foul well Canada's going to have to get more possession than they're getting right now or they be, better be ready to chase for most of these 90 minutes. Here's a little one-two. Walsh makes sure that that can't be completed. It's probably the right thing to do defensively if you're going to get beaten on a one-two. 32 minutes gone. USA up by a goal from this lady, Shannon McMillan. 
McMillan will loft it up inside the box, headed toward goal, but off target for the blockers there. I think that was Brandy Chastain. She's got to head the ball across the, the front of the goal mount to somebody crashing from the other side. 33rd minute, nearly a giveaway there. Now it is. Good wheels there. Milbrit trying to turn it inside. Locked and cleared by Rustak. Tip was seeing things that weren't there. She did a great job to hold the ball, and now she's just got to keep possession. Chastain couldn't get that one wide enough for McMillan. Somet sometimes the USA gets so eager to attack that they try, you know, I call it the not on syndrome. It's really not on. You've got to, you know, be a bit more patient and keep rolling. Slate pushing up. She took a hit, mouthed off. Uh, I don't know if she took a hit or, or ran through a hit. She won't reach this one for Milton. It's Marie Claude Dion, 23rd international for her. U.S. gets it back. Chastain at the halfway line. Back to Sobrero. Off the block. Canada looks for this at the halfway line. On his header. Peter Counterpart, but the ball was lost out. Samantha Morneau's throw in. She'll get it back. Morneau, one of the World Cup players from 99. Intended for a hooper on the wrong side of her. Chastain's got it. McMillan pushes it back. USA using four at the back. With a 4-3-3 today. But with some different players playing and a push from Canada. I think Canada's also playing 4-3-3, trying to match the USA 4-3-3. LeBlanc comes after this. Hasn't scored in her last eight. Couldn't have asked for a better service. Shannon uh, McMillan did the exact right thing there. She saw Christine open. She put it right on her head, and Christine has to hammer that head ball low. And slides it up. The give was intended back for Lily, but she couldn't get to that one. Here's Shannon McMillan getting on the end of that. Puts it right on Christine Lily's head. And just hit it at where the goalkeeper most easily is going to save it at shoulder height. Seven shots on goal for the United States. One goal on the books. Well, let's have that one. Here's the clearance from Canada. 36th minute. The U.S. leads thanks to McMillan's goal way back in the 12th minute. Just need a kiss. Canada in red on the ball, pushing it back to go forward. Off Sinclair and Tennifer Hooper. Slayton. McMillan drives this one, a long diagonal. Canada have players back to cover. Nicely headed back by Morneau to LeBlanc. Yeah, pretty well defended by Canada because when Canada goes forward like that, the USA should look to counterattack every time. And that's what Shannon McMillan was looking for, and it was a good probing ball. They continue to look for Hooper. Instead, the USA collects Sir Lenga. different opinion of it. Let's take a look. Too close for me to call, you know, I'm not, I'm only a coach. LeBlanc will clear this. I was going to say, today you're a broadcaster, but I think once a coach, right, always a coach. Because that's the way you watch a game, isn't so. it? Is that the way you watch a game, as a coach? Sure. Here's Sobrero. Middle taking on a defender or two, fires it. Oh, what a goal! Shadow McMillan 
took the shot with nothing but power. Well, the competition in the USA lineup is just continues to heat up. Shannon here, I'm not sure if it hits off a defender's foot, but let me tell you, that ball comes down in a hurry. Seems like it starts up and just dips under the bar. She can hit a ball like that. I think it might have come off a defender's foot, and it dips right over the top of LeBlanc. Again, two goals, two shots by McMillan, two non-moves by LeBlanc. I think you're right, too. Slight deflection, but enough to change the entire ball. What a great hit. So McMillan's got both goals. Coming back after sitting out the last game, they say she could have played. It was just a slight knee injury, but why risk it? Not at this stage, especially since Shannon has had some injury problems before. They finally get her healthy, and you see what she can do. You saw that last year when she's healthy. Right. I mean, absolutely the right call by April Heinrichs. This is not a, a win-at-all-cost tournament. They have to win in Sydney. That's going to be their goal. Everything else has to be done as far as coaching choices based on that uh, Olympics in Sydney. Canada now finding themselves two goals down. Hooper up the middle. No room there. Picked back up by Canada. Almost. Had that ball gotten through, Walsh might have had a breakaway. Now the foul was called as Lily was brought down. Well, it's important for Canada now not to lose focus to get back in the game here. They haven't played that badly. Two great goals by McMillan, and they're down 2-0, but they've still done some good things here against the USA. You see, Pellerud is up, always coaching. He won the World Cup back in 95 with Norway. And then he was coaching some men's teams. All of a sudden, he's back in the women's game coaching Canada. This year, he started. I have a lot of respect for Evan Pellerud. He's a gentleman. He's a winner on the field. That Norwegian team in 95 is one of the great teams in, in women's soccer history. Silvana Bertini will put it back in play. Left footed free kick off Slate. Danielle recovers. Tackle away. Slate out of San Jose, California. That's Canada's captain, Amy Walsh. Christina Kiss will have a throw in. Look at the USA condense here. Sent all the way across. It's headed for Sinclair. She may get to this, but there's Mullenix. Hooper was in as well. Sinclair has a nose for the goal, especially for someone her age. Yes, she does. Ooh, what a hard tackle there. Danielle kind of brought that on herself. Took her a while to get rid of that ball. Here's the U.S. looking for more. Canada will get it back. A foul called. Headed back by Slate. Chastain will cover. And clear. But it goes out in the 41st minute. Inside the box. Canada. We're going to get on the board. A bit of a push there inside the box. The good ball is clear. It's very good defensive position by Joy Fawcett to clean that up with that blue ball. Slade with good speed on the outside. Canada with Boyd. Or no, left foot to the head for Hooper with a back to goal. Charmaine Hooper trying to turn around. That's broken up. He will chase it. And helps to almost force a giveaway, but instead the U.S. gets it back. Millen, lead pass. Ham had to wait a bit for it. Now she's got it. 1v2. Ham going outside, awaits some help, plays it across. Cut off by Canada and cleared. Well, I like Mia's mentality. She is looking to go out players, but she just hesitated a bit there, and a second defender came in. Last year, the first time in a long time, Ham was not the leading goal scorer on this team, but she led them in assists, and this year she leads them in assists too. She's just an awesome player. She doesn't have to score goals to be very, very important to the team. 
He's a great defender as well as a, an assist artist. All the way back to the feet of Molinex. Join us for Cart Today on Sunday. Paul Page brings you up to speed in the latest car news from the Saturday Marconi Grand Prix of Cleveland. That is Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Coming back the other way. Canada cannot afford to give one up here. One nothing wasn't that bad before. Now it's down by two. And looking inside, we're trying to find him. to Solenga. Solenga pulls it back. Nicely done. Sent it all the way across. U.S. sending several players in the box. Play inside. LeBlanc go for it. Did she touch it? No. Okay. Well, Mia Hamm's run drew two players off of Timothy Milbert, and she cuts inside. And hits it for that far post, and it's got goal written on it, and it's oh, it's off the, the post and out. What a good strike by Tiffany Milbert. And that all was set up by Nikki Serlinga. I like what she's doing with the ball. She's still keeping possession, probing, but also looking for some forward options. Karina LeBlanc will take her time with this. Nearly 44 minutes gone. We've got a special look at Christine Lilly coming up at halftime. Plus, we'll also have our first half highlights. You'll get to see those McMillan goals again as Mullenix clears. Speaking of Lilly, 207th international. That's what this number is for her tonight. Tiffany Milbert has to take on that defender there. It's almost looking like Tiffany's looking to pass, whereas her game, her trademark is try defenders when you when you're matched up 1v1 settled by the US and then they lose it for Tini didn't get that ball back on her own left foot get some help now off uh, Hooper but Hooper was fouled interesting matchup in the center of the USA defense with Hooper and Sobrero if there was one player that I'd want to have Hooper matched up with, it would be Sobrero. So I'm not sure what Pellerou is trying to do there. He's matching up his, arguably his best attacking player on the USA best man-to-man -man marker. Okay, okay. USA getting this ball. It's blocked. Canada recovers and loses. We're in stoppage time now. They'll put a minute on. On the near side, the run was attempted by Ham. There it is officially for you. One minute, and we're into it now. Canada will clear. Hooper, double team, lost to Fowdy. Milbert, great move. Here she goes. She's in. Shot. Go. Milbert, three nothing. USA. This is what Tiffany Milbert does best. She beats players, and she gets into this position. She makes sure of it, blasting a left footer by LeBlanc. Even up with the ball, Tiffany's going to outrun any defender in the world, and she makes good with it there. Is anyone quicker on that first step, that explosive step she takes no with the ball? I've seen. And what a, what a goal to give up for Canada, right on the stroke of halftime. That's devastating. And while we were away on those replays, the halftime whistle sounded. So Canada could have escaped after 45 minutes, only down by one. Now they're down by three. Two goals by McMillan, one by Tiffany Milbert. Shannon McMillan got things off of the right foot for the USA. And now they have a big lead over Canada. It's 3 0 at halftime. front and side airbags, V6 power, and a generous list of features, including the ability to leave it all behind. The Sonata from...
Sunday with the freedom of America's best warranty plan. From AYSO to the World Cup, Hyundai is proud to support soccer. I'm serious. Whenever guys find out I have a cat, they break. You kidding me? I love cats. Well, of course, my cat's not like other cats. Well, sure he isn't. He gets so jealous if anyone drinks my butt light. Oh, anyway, I'll go get changed. You're right. Great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Oh, look at you, too. Make it a Bud Light. Before a select ball leaves the factory, it must pass an inspection like no other in the world. For flight trajectory, surface abrasion, stitch resiliency, and a perfectly consistent bounce. Some balls, however, are chosen by Chief Inspector Anna Lankoven for a more extreme set of tests. Her procedures are somewhat confidential. Showtime presents a powerful new original series. There's a place on the streets of L.A. born of dreams, desperation, and desire. In the heart of Los Angeles lies the soul of a family. To all the Santiago's, Salud. Resurrection Boulevard, a new original series, only on Showtime. No limits. Mr. Jordan, you ever see Shamiqua Holtzfaw play? She's not bad. Not bad? Talking about the claw. Oh, girl's got crazy skills. Crossover dribble, fly the hole. Before you can even say you go, girl, she's gone. She's been drinking your stuff. Gatorade. Car replacing electrolyte. You the inspector of the athlete. Oh. Hey, Mikey, what do you think about this? If I could be like Meek. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, sure. Right. sure. <laughs> That's very funny, Mike. Come on. Welcome back, everyone, to the 2000 Women's Gold Cup. USA leads Canada 3 to nothing. Two goals by McMillan and one by Tiffany Milbrett. No goals yet for Christine Lilly, but she doesn't have to score to be effective for the United States. Here's a look at a special young lady. If there's one player I think that could make 300 caps, it'd be Christine Lilly. She's Iron Woman. She's, she's amazing. If we have a team pool, I bet she's the first, first person picked on any team. For 13 years, Christine Lilly has been the constant for the U.S. national team. Scoring goals. Stopping goals. And running. Running. Just running. In May, she took the field for the Stars and Stripes. 200 the teammates were great. I mean, they're the ones that make big things out of things that you kind of want to push aside. Um, my family came. They gave me flowers. They gave me a beautiful bracelet. Um, and then the U.S. Talker gave me a, a diamond necklace with two C's on it for Century. Adidas gave me those sweet golden shoes. So there was a lot of special moments. And then at the end, they carried me off the field. And I think that just, it meant a lot because I realized that it meant a lot to my teammates as well. You know, they were congratulating me and respecting for what I've done, and I think that really hit home. She's an incredible force on the field and somebody that we need in order to win. She's just incredible. Her talent is legendary, and, and the reason why she is the first person to reach 200 um, is because of, of who she is and what she's about. And, uh, you know, she's always one of the fittest. She never cuts corners and never looks for an easy way out. And, and all of us... Uh, playing alongside her, have the utmost respect and admiration for her. Just to know that I've accomplished that and to see that how far the sport of soccer has come, you know, I appreciate what I've done and I respect how, how far I've come and that I've been a major part um, of the process of women's soccer. Summer's here and saving is easy. State leads Canada 3 to nothing. It was a 1 to nothing game until the 38th minute when McMillan scored and then Milbert scored again in the 45th minute. Latham will replace Savannah Bertini and Christine Latham made her international debut in the last U.S. Cup 2000. Scored her first goals internationally the other night. Three of them, in fact, in a win over Guatemala. So we'll see if there are any changes in Sport, tactics wise, especially for the Canadians, who could use some help here down three to nothing to a team they haven't beaten since 1986. USA and White on the ball, Fawcett. 
Third upfield. Canada trying to put on a little more pressure defensively. And of course, that giveaway on the bomb. played well in that U.S. Cup game against the United States. She's a hard player, very physical, strong on the ball. U.S. will have a throw in, Tiffany Milbrook. Selenka touches the right side. Milbrook hangs it up. LeBlanc's coming out, punched it away from Christine Lilly. That ball went out of play. Well, good range by LeBlanc, but she was obviously her concentration was pulled off the ball by Christine's presence. Danielle Slayton's throw in. Lily played it out. Slayton holds. Back for Lily as Ham tries to show for the ball. What a combo they were in college and internationally. Lily coming in, trying to slide it across. She went down. And are they going to say the foul was outside? Referee delayed the call to see if there was an advantage, which is the right thing to do, but you can see as she goes to kick it, she's fouled. And it's a dangerous free kick for the United States. Especially, especially the way uh, McMillan's hitting him right now. They're hand right now over the ball. There are three players in the neighborhood. Run over so that Ham can strike it at a time. First one was made by Lilly. Let's see how Mia takes this. Uh, she she takes a, took it better than the, the one she took a couple of games ago. But still, she's got to hit the space just above the wall and let the natural dip of the ball bring it under the bar. There's a long chase back. They have two players back there. Slate and a foul. She came in on Lapham. Free kick coming up for Canada. The goal they scored in that 9-1 game came after they were already trailing. 9-0. for the free kick. A bender, far side, and it goes almost in goal. It was cleared away. Danielle Slayton hard that off the goal line. Well, Canada almost scored the first goal against USA in this tournament. Here comes the serve to the back post. Siri doesn't come for it, and Danielle has to carve it out. Back the other way. There was some help there too. There's another USA player in there. Walsh was passing it across. She was not shooting. Had she headed that ball to a goal, she might have got one her own. There's a second watch, US player. Watch Molinick now. She just kind of jumps up in the air, which is not what you want to do. But Slayton, I don't know who the other player was, gets her left foot to it and puts it over for a touch. Uh, over for a touch throwing. Marina LeBlanc holds it up. Canada trails by three, 50th minute. It's a big mountain for Canada to climb to get to the title match. And you all say, a huge favorite coming in. And have played like that. They've played a superb game. 12 shots that we showed you in the first half, 10 find the target. I mean, coaches love that. It's not very often that you see it. Very sharp in the first half. And you know what, JP? They could have scored about three others. U.S. trying to come back in the wing, and that's deflected out. Canada scramble back for it. LeBlanc will call off Boyd. That's April Heinrichs, John Ellis, her assistant, to her left. She's getting closer to another final match, and they've already won the U.S. team four important tournaments this year. Canada 
Jack scrambling, picking up the loose ball. Trying to go along, but Slayton's there in the space. Now Molnix came out, and they didn't communicate with one another. That turned into a dangerous ball. Canada come back with it. That became more dangerous than it should have been, but uh, Siri Molnix made a good choice to just pass it outside to Danielle Slayton. Evan Pellerou, the head coach of Canada. Oh, no. 47 this month. He took over as head coach here in March of 2000. Aerial battle for a while. Got a physical battle. And the foul is called on Fawcett taking down Hooper. They are longtime rivals. JP, you're right. The USA has won every tournament they've entered this year, which is a great start and build up to the Olympics. The first tournament was won by my assistant coaches taking the team after I resigned to Australia. And April Heinrich has taken the uh, won, has won every other tournament, including the Algarve Cup. The first tournament, right, was the young team because there was a, a payment dispute. Right, the young team. Many of these players: Danielle Slate, Nikki Serlanga, Siri Molinix, uh, and, uh, and a number of others that are on this team went over to Australia and won that tournament. Thankfully, they got the money problem squared away as McMillan hits for the hat trick trying to go up the middle. Here's Canada. And Mullenix will clear some big time numbers, and they do not include today's goal scoring for the United States in these other competitions. And they're facing good teams. They're facing the Chinas, the Norways, in many of these tournaments. Well, they are, but that's still the question mark. I think they're right where they want to be. They're actually 1-3-1 and one against the top teams in the world, but they still have a, a way to go to get to full form before the Olympics. I think April Heinrichs has them right where she wants them, and they're playing wonderful soccer in this game. Here's Slate. Setting it across and high. She gets some youth and speed on that side. She does cross the ball well normally. She's the type of player you have to deal with. If you're coaching against her, you got to know about her. You've got to know that she's going to come forward and serve the box like that. Sinclair. No room there. She's going to throw in quickly. In the corner, right by the flag. It looked like Canada lost it. And they did. Goal kick for Mullenix. This portion of the match being brought to you commercial free by Bud Light. Latham at 18, one of those players that Evan Cullerwood is going to find, and that will make Canada better when he finds the players. I think they're already a better team, but the, the challenge they have is to play a style that doesn't expose them because when they come out and try to play the USA even up they are going to be exposed by the, the great individual talent the USA has the USA will get the ball back that lily pass Selenga goes forward toward the right Millen's cross now it's cleared by Canada and the outside flag is up against Charmaine Hooper looking for a quick strike anything to get themselves back in the game 55th minute USA leads three to nothing headed for the final on Monday in Foxborough that would be against Brazil who beat China earlier on a golden goal PK by Sidinha Castain holds it's a great result for Brazil how ironic, the USA thought they might play China in the final. Now the only way they could play China is if they were to lose this game. And that would be in the third place game. Nice ball. Ham finds Fawcett. Fawcett's in deep, plays it in, a missed kick once. And then it's cleared by Canada. That's the one time the USA were not steady in the box. Long shot right in the block. 
picking up speed all the way through. <laughs> Rowan McMillan had her hat trick there. Fawcett gave it to her on the platter. She'll hear about that later from Joy. Two players that will be on the WUSA San Diego team next year. Plus Fowdy, right? Fowdy also. So uh, that, and Julie just took that shot that uh, LeBlanc saved. Here's Fowdy running onto it. Hits it very well, just right at her. Nice save by LeBlanc, making it look easy. Well, in the total shots, it's 14 to 2 now for the United States, and the majority of the USA's shots have been on goal. 11 of the 14. Down she goes. She got a whack as she went to release that ball. JP getting back to the Brazil win and nothing to take anything away from Brazil because they're a young, exciting team. But it's not the same China team that we saw last year. I think I think they're overtrained, they've over-traveled, and they've got their work uh, cut out for them just to get back to their level. Long USA shot is blocked. Of course, no Sun Wen was injured, and she's a big part of their team. Makes everybody better around her. Absolutely. Canada will clear this ball. Austin is back there. It was intended for Hooper. Canada will have a throw in. The captain will take it, Amy Walsh. She captain this squad back in the Algarve Cup. There's some holding going on there. Penalty, penalty kick. Some holding Sobrero gets called for it. She's not arguing the call. I think she's upset at herself. Well, she is because she doesn't do a good job of screening this ball. And I think the foul came a lot earlier. Well, you can see that. There's no, no contact whatsoever there, and a penalty is awarded. Here's where the foul is yeah. before it ever gets into the penalty area. Well, you can see from the other angle there was no contact that Hooper Dolan got the PK. She was fouled. She just wasn't fouled in the penalty area. Hooper against Mullenix. Hooper scored earlier in this tournament on a penalty kick. She strikes it well. A goal for Canada. And the USA have given up their first goal. and to make the goal a little bit smaller. Still, it's well taken by Charmaine Hooper. Behind us! And Hooper now has scored in every game in the Gold Cup, four straight games. The penalty kick goal she scored earlier was against China. USA now 3-1. to one. And we'll see how that changes the game if Let's it does. Go. Well, good start for Canada now in the second half. If they can get another one, they can make this a real challenge right to the end. Well, moments before, USA almost went up 4 nothing. Instead, it's 3-1. It's back, and it's blocked and cleared by Walsh. Good move in the flank. Clear the field. It's headed for Hooper. Blocked. Sinclair. Back to the halfway line, two USA players run into each other. Sinclair plays it up. No play? Yes, there is. So Canada is offside. Aikman gets called. Join us on Monday for WNBA action. Teresa Witherspoon leading New York Liberty against the Cleveland Rockers, a team that's been in the first place for a good part of this year in the WNBA's Eastern Division. That's Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. This portion of the match being brought to you by IFS Commercial Free. USA has to get a hold of the game again. Just start knocking it around, which they've done for most of this game. The balls like that are just going to help Canada get back into the game because they want to play a scrappy style. Back to 
Surrey Mullinex. If this result stands, the USA would play Brazil and money for the title game, and China and Canada would renew their rivalry. The last couple of games have been huge ones for those two nations. Well, they're one and one, so that would be another hotly contested match. All the way back, stop there by LeBlanc. this Sarah Whalen had been up on the USA bench the US have not subbed in this game they didn't sub at all in the last game but the players were very fit April Heinrichs went status quo for the full 90s for everybody Canada will recover off Sinclair's touch and a foul is called right there on Canada and through it and Evan Hunter might be wanting to make a change as well. Here's the foul. Julie Foddy coming in for the ball is pushed off. USA will take it right side with Fawcett. Toward the end line, as she tried to cross it, it's tackled out by Morneau. She's out there, normally takes these. She's pointing towards the substitution that they've not let happen yet. And now we'll see it. Well, Sarah Whalen has played well in this competition. She has scored three goals, tied with Carlo and Solinga coming in for Team High. Now McMillan's their high score. And Milton will come out. Tiffany's had a strong game. This will be a good opportunity for Sarah Whalen to make a statement on her Olympic roster. This is the second time she's come out of this competition. She's playing up front. Horstead deflected up. USA looking for another. And they saying it was. Uh, let's see, this is a confusion. It's a corner kick that was called a goal kick. It was headed off the Canadian defender over the top of the goal. We'll see it better here, hopefully. Chastain here. Yeah, it was headed off the Canadian player. Should have been. Randy Chastain on the backside heads it. It hits Amy Walsh, I believe, goes over the goal, and the goal kick was awarded. Settled by the USA, and the Lily pass was picked up. Pushed back by Sir Langer. Very possible. one goal scored a big one right at the end of the first half which seemed to give the USA an insurmountable lead but one goal can change it but Canada needs another to give themselves a little more life and a little more confidence well I think Latham has instilled some life into him here in the second half and the, that penalty by Hooper has given him some hope so USA is gonna have to still play in this game and right now they kind of got all the things they were doing so well in the first half which was their possession here's that corner again it's headed it's headed off a defender's head goes over the goal but the referee just missed it this portion of the match being brought to you commercial three by Hyundai USA three Canada one the winner plays Brazil Monday in the final from Foxborough. You can see it right here. Pushed ahead. Nice ball. Laid off. And across. Good choice by me to just keep it in possession. Slate will push it. Another foul. Kick. USA as Lily draws the contact. Quick restart. Coming back. And a goal. Mia Hamm. Heads up play by the USA. They get the ball right back in play. Mia beats her defender. Drives a hard shot, but the blank can't get around the post. She wanted that. 
quick restart. USA now leads four to one. One change for Canada. Andrea Neal replaces Marie Claude Dion. So just when Canada had some thoughts of coming back into this game, Mia Hamm scores, and for Mia, the 121st international goal, the third goal of this tournament. Again, it's the transition game with the USA. As soon as they were fouled, they got the ball back in play. Foudy to Hamm. To the back of the net. She is 13th goal against Canada. Which again has been her favorite component to play against at least goal scoring wise. I noticed when the blank dove for that, she, she dove with closed fists trying to box it around the post. And it's better to have open hands and use a hard surface of the heel of your hand to get it out. Hooper flicks it on, but it's only on the Mullenix and the flag was up anyway. 67th minute. Mullenix will put it back in play. Sir is only 22 years old. The best goal scorer in the world. Put on a classic finish there. To give the USA a little more breathing room. 4-1 lead over Canada. Sir Lenga. Tackle there by Canada and cleared into space. No one is close enough in a red uniform to get it. Sobrero. The eighth minute. USA on two goals by McMillan, one by Milbert, one by Ham, have the lead. McMillan's doing some defensive chasing here. Randy comes, or it's McMillan comes in with a shoulder in the back. And it's clear foul. Chastain, outside left to Slate. He's going to be blocked with authority. Goes out of play, going for Slate. You're watching the 2000 Women's Gold Cup here on ESPN from Louisville, Kentucky. USA leads 4 to 1. Last goal scored by Mia Hamm. Two goals have been scored in this half. Hooper's goal is the only one USA have given up in this tournament. Canada fighting to win it back, and here they come. Give and go to the right side. That's too far for oh, West Ham. That goal has settled down the USA. They're starting to knock it around again. I really like the way their front runners are holding the ball, creating rhythm with their midfield. Shane Hooper. Lord Sinclair. She stays with it. Pushed upfield. Canada now making a couple of good passes until the last one. Then it's given away. Sinclair had a block. Brought down to Hooper. And then the USA will clear. They looked a bit shaky that time at the back. Well, they had a couple of missed clears, uh, but they kept their numbers in and eventually got the clear. Fawcett, nice turn. Fawcett throws it up. Taken away. Canada will move it up. USA will collect it. Who else will come in for the USA? So many skilled players to choose from. It appears that the flag goes up, they behind which will go to the bench again. And give some players a rest, have them think about Monday. Well, yeah, it's uh, two days away, and it's a, a trip to from Louisville to Boston, so resting players makes a lot of sense. Hamilton offside. You can see she was just offside early on, in on that run. They will collect the belt. Whalen with her speed coming laterally. Goes all the way back. Marina LeBlanc for the ball. 70 minutes gone. LeBlanc way out. Now we'll clear. 
and they're still unable to build much in terms of possession to create their own scoring chances. Try in the middle again, then it's played out wide, and Austin was there. Evan Pellerud, obviously his Norwegian style is a very direct style. They want the ball up the field in a hurry to try to get their front runners to receive the ball and have some space. But if you don't, if they don't hold the ball, you do a lot of chasing defensively. Hooper, up field it comes. Laid back by the USA to the feet of Surrey Mullenix, who clears. She'll try the long ball. Intended for Hooper, and instead, Surrey Mullenix picks it up. We invite you to pick up the MLS ESPN shootout package. You can watch 100 soccer matches that you can't see anywhere else. For more info, call DirecTV or Prime Store. Mullenix clears. Looks like Glory Fair is getting ready to enter the game. Near side, push back. Hooper. Charmaine Hooper trying to go outside. She played it through. There's no one else to play it to. Lost out by Canada. Mullenix will put it back in play. USA want to sub Lori Fair in. Fair has played in the center midfield now, and that's been her best position. But Tony, we've seen her play in front as an attacking midfield and also at the back. Well, she's a very versatile player. I think the fact that April Heinrich has used her only at midfield this year has helped her kind of learn all the nuances of the position. I personally think she's a better holding midfielder than attacking midfielder, but I think she can play either. Mullenix will strike. Off the Hooper touch. The feed wide right. Canada setting numbers forward. The cross over Sinclair. And out of play. It looked ambitious at the start. Coming up now from the United States, you see Christy and Lily, as you might have expected, getting the captain's armband once Julie Foudy left. Canada back with it off the left foot. Tender for Hooper, that's off target. 74th minute. USA up four to one. Two goals by McMillan, one by Milbert, one by Ham. The front runners doing all the scoring. LeBlanc with that kick for Shank. Whalen comes through with that burst of speed and it's cleared away. Sarah Whalen can fly. Set up by a misclear by LeBlanc there. Uh, Whalen almost got on the end of it and got around the defense. Boston played it up and the outside flag goes up. One count. And a hand looking for her second goal. here behind the last defender clearly offside good pass whoever made that pass i'm not sure but that was played in here very nicely says of course she's going to come on for me a half the other day susan bush she had one goal but she also had four assists well she's an exciting player she's young and she's going to get so much better and she is such a hard worker, it's good to see her be successful. One ball and four assists came in a win over Costa Rica. So the USA getting a lot accomplished today. A, they're winning, headed for the final, and B, they're resting some players. Which is important, because this tournament, which has traveled to Mans, is uh, very difficult. Cooper couldn't come around on that shot. Cleared back to the halfway line. Canada is chasing. Back to LeBlanc. And Karina LeBlanc clears. The U.S. will head it to the middle. This right sideline goes away. Ten for Whalen. Or no. 
trying to get it back. Off the back of a fallen player for Canada. And now the foul on the U.S. Joy Foster, so dependable for the United States, whether she's at the right back, center of the fence, I mean, she could play anywhere. Well, I used her in the World Cup at central midfield, at holding midfield when Michelle Akers had to come out. So, you're right, J.P. Foster coming back to track. Turn away, but Canada gets it right back. Just over to the right side. They're trying to send more numbers up. So like a little block. Daniel Slate. Canadians will play a backup field, but they give the ball away again. Sir Lenga from Slate, college teammates at Santa Clara. Whalen running straight ahead. Off the block, she tries to stay with it. Sinclair came back for it. Looked up for Hooper. Canada with three on the attack. And they were holding up to stay on side. Now it's a late play. Well, it did look off side when the ball was played, but it was a late call. Joy Fawcett holds her position to make sure she's offside. And I think as soon as she started to move towards the ball, that's when the uh, assistant referee raised the flag. Sergey Molinex, uh, University of North Carolina, some great college goalkeepers have come out of there. Off the deflection. LeBlanc came out well. Otherwise, it's 5-1. You're right, JP. She had to be very alert there. Flicked through. Came out very strong. will knock it down towards the left corner flag and it'll go out of play. Sinclair not getting the opportunities tonight that she has had in previous games. Not had much of a supply of the ball. It's difficult for the front runners if the service is just balls knocked up there and they've got to fight for everything. We have got a chance to rest here. Julie Foudy also went out. Tiffany Milburn. They'll all be back on Monday. And April Hymix didn't have to play Parlo tonight or Pierce who had played in the other games. And for that ball, was Susan Bush. Ray Fawcett. Oh, this throw in. Canada getting it back in the halfway line. Look out here for Hooper behind the defense. Good save by Terry Monix. Again, that defense holding that line. Pretty good run by Charmaine Hooper. Ball's played in behind. There's another one. Monix hasn't had to be tested much today. Still a 4 1 USA lead. Try the long one. That goes out. Wayford Heinrich can't be that happy with the, those two defensive plays back to back because one required an excellent save by Siri Molinix and the other one allowed Charmaine Hooper a free shot at goal. Coming up next, baseball tonight. Join Carl Ravitch, Tim Pritchett, and Mike McFarland. Lots to talk about. Mike Piazza, one of the hottest bats in baseball. And there was a problem in that Yankees Devil Rays game. Coming up next on Baseball Tonight. I understand Carl Ravitch has this golf swing that's unbelievable. Well, we had the long drive contest at the Greater Hartford Open. And although the ESPN team came in second to the coaches' team, he hit his drive 310 yards. Well done, Carl. How long was yours? Uh, I'd rather not say, but uh, actually it was 250, so I was pretty pleased with that. That's long for me, JP. Way to go, coach. Here is Canada settling. 80th minute, 4-1, USA leading. Headed for the finals of another tournament on Monday. Canada bringing it down. A crowded midfield area. Whalen touching back. Christine Lilly has it in the left foot. 
plays it up. Looks for the give and go, but that space was too tight. Yeah, somebody needed to kind of bend the run out into the flank on the left flank and open up some space for Christine Lilly. Severo pass for Chastain. goes down. Adrian Yale committing the foul. Adrian Yale is a former starter on this team, but you can, she has no chance to get the ball. She's just trying to play totally out of effort. And commits an obvious foul. Two World Cups under Andrea Neal's belt. U.S. getting it back, pulling it wide to the bush. Nobody there on the receiving end. You can see the acceleration of Susan Bush. All she needs is uh, a few inches, and she's uh, she's by that defender. USA with Slate. Locked out. Throw in coming up for the U.S. national team. Chastain. A field. that's blocked. Cleared away. Joy Fawcett will take it on the right side. Off one flick, back towards Fawcett. Driving it long. Canada won that and lost it up. Bush will have a throw in. Houston Bush from Houston, Texas. The touch from Bear. Push right back. Boy, Bear holds. Tried to take the shot. It was blocked. Good little combination play there. Susan Bush and Lori Fair. Lori had a two-goal game earlier in the competition. Game one against Trinidad and Tobago. And up by Fossil. Say four, Canada one. USA just minutes away from heading to the finals. Be against Brazil. Canada would play China in the third place game, a big double header at Foxborough Stadium on Monday. The USA Brazil game is going to be very interesting. Brazil feels they came to this tournament, they're in the final, it's a total success for them. Anything else they get is a bonus, so they, they're probably going to be very loose. Just Dan Mouclair. Canada getting it back on the right side. Looking long. And the flag was up again. And Latham in the 84th minute. You see here, that again, Joy Fawcett just keeps her offside, and lathan has got to be able to see the whole line there. Her job is to keep herself onside. She's got good speed. She just needs to cut it that close. Well, an experience. Canada won it back, but only for a moment. Now they'll get it back on the throw, as USA knocked it out. Part of the atmosphere at Papa John Cardinal Stadium. In Louisville, Kentucky, until last year, not really considered much of a soccer venue. They had never tried it there. And U.S. soccer was very happy with attendance figures from a year ago. Sinclair will throw in. Off Hooper. Big, high, and hard shot for Morneau. Over Mullins. Minute. It's all USA leading Canada 4 1. Two by McMillan, one by Milbert, one by Ham. Cooper scored on a penalty kick for Canada. In the 58th minute. On the, road. the USA has to feel good about this game. Canada came out with a lot of confidence. And as well as the USA played, there's room for improvement. And I think April Hendricks has got to be pleased with the way the USA team is playing right now.
level off in the 86th minute. Looking for Hooper. Goes forward. U.S. pulls it back. Slate. Chest aim. They remain committed to the four in the back of this game. Sobrero. On that 4-3-3, you start with the four in the back, but if you're playing it right, you constantly have one of those four backs in the midfield. Canada will play it back to LeBlanc. Looked up. Settled there by the U.S. Lily was on the go. USA lead in the 87th minute. Coming all the way back towards Arena LeBlanc. You can watch the 2000 Gold Cup Final on Monday. It'll be Brazil taking on the United States national team. 9 Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time here on ESPN. You see it on ESPN 2, actually, on Monday. About three minutes left and maybe some stoppage time. The USA with a 4-1 lead over Canada. We're on a play. Canada gets the throwing again. USA defending against Cooper. Canada picks it right back up. There's a shot block. Cut three. And it'll be shot up high and over. Canada can be too discouraged with this, with this game either. I think they played a pretty good game, just got behind a very sharp USA team in the first half, and they're not going to be able to come back from the three-goal deficit. Last game, as you mentioned, 9-1 in the Pacific Cup. They have the same record as the USA and China. Lost in goal differential, so that 9-1 game was a killer. Yeah, that'll ruin your goal difference. Intended for Hooper, that's cleared, but a foul is called. Hooper and Latham fighting to the very end. Spare doing the chasing and the fouling. We kick for Canada. Five in the wall for the U.S. Well, Hooper scored two of these against USA in the FIFA All-Star game. I got to believe she's going to hit it. She can hit him righty or lefty. She's there with Christina Kiss. Char Charmaine Hooper also will be playing in the WUSA, so we'll be seeing a lot more of her, I hope. Hooper strikes it off the left foot. Off the left of that off the crossbar. Corner kick, Canada. What a save by Suri Monik. She got a late start on it. Was able to push it up against the bar. Going inside, and there's Hooper again. Well, Charmaine Hooper has shown a lot of fight here today. Coming back from his shin splints, going the full 90. Watch this free kick here. She bends it over the wall, lefty. And Suri Monik makes an excellent save, putting it up against the bar. She doesn't get a touch to it. That's clearly in the back of the net. 90th minute, late stages of it. Let's see how much stoppage time the referee will put on the board. It's a 4-1 USA lead. It was 3-0 at halftime. Mullenix, long run. She knocks it out. Only one minute will be put on the board. Jermaine Hooper's got to be pretty excited. Look at this free kick again. Really well taken. Requires a world-class save. We're in stoppage time now as this one goes in wide of Monix. As I was saying, JP, Charmaine's got to be very happy. 
Evan Tolliver is bringing in some young talent that's very um, positive to the team, and it's going to make her job easier. It's going to make her more effective. Mullenix will clear this out. <laughs> That's a new twist. Sobrero, will you marry my brother? She wants to be your sister-in-law again. <laughs> Seconds left of this one as it's cleared. LeBlanc at the edge of the box. Now she'll clear it out. Canada getting it back. Looking again for Hooper. USA have that one smothered. Slayton is there. That'll do it. Game over. USA is headed for the finals of another tournament. They'll try to win their fifth. There are your goal scores. McMillan set the tone early, but I thought that goal by Milbert ended that was over. I think that was the backbreaker right on the stroke of halftime. Surrey Molex gave up one of that penalty kick to Charmaine Hooper. USA wins 4 to 1, so they have a date with Brazil Monday in the final at Foxborough. McMillan two goals, Milford one, hand the other. Hooper, the lone goal for Canada as the USA gets their 100th win. Well, there no question, but then look, there's no contact as Hooper goes down. Well, she draws the penalty here. The foul happened outside the penalty area, but she does not waste her opportunity. And she buries it left-footed into to the goalkeeper's right. Surrey Molnix could do nothing on that kick. Then it was Mia Hamm off a quick restart, during that one off the hands of LeBlanc. Well, Christine Lilly was taken down, and it was right back in play, and ended up in the back of the net. Well, Canada ended up with more shots, certainly in the second half than they did in the first half, but the USA still had the edge and they put 12 of their 17 on goal. I think it was a good second half for Canada, but the real test comes on Monday when it will be settled on the field because uh, the last time they played it was 0-0, so there's something still to be settled. USA beats Canada by the final score of 4-1 to one in this second semifinal game, and Mia Hamm had one of those goals scored. She has scored so many goals against Canada, now 13 against the neighbors to the north. Mayhem will be ready for the final on Monday from Foxborough. And you can see it on ESPN2, the 2000 Gold Cup Championship match. It is between Brazil and the United States. Join us from Foxborough Stadium at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time on ESPN2. USA wins 4-1. to one. Middle down 2, Milbert 1, and Ham 1. Hooper the lone goal for Canada. Thank you for watching, everyone. For Tony DiCicco, I'm John Paul Della Camera. Baseball tonight is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, Go.com. See you Monday from Fox Pro for the Gold Cup Championship. On baseball tonight, welcome back everyone to Fox Pro, Massachusetts, the second half of our doubleheader. Live from Foxborough Stadium, we have the Gold Cup 2000 final. It is between the United States, who come in as the favorites, and Brazil, the most improved team in the women's soccer world. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome to Foxborough, along with Tony DiCicco and John Paul Della Camera. For the USA to win this game, they'll have to finish Tony like they did the other night against Canada. Well, they were sharp against Canada, especially in the first half, JP. Shannon McMillan put on a show, and when she strikes the ball, it's in the back of the net. She had two world-class goals. USA defeated Canada in that game, that semifinal game, 4-1. to Meanwhile, Brazil came in as the underdogs against China. Great game all the way. They come back on the golden goal PK by Cedinha. Cedinha's goal not only put him into the final, I think it was a, 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 a trademark of theirs. We're moving up the pecking order in world soccer. We've moved beyond China, and now they're after the USA. And if they ever beat the USA tonight, what a jump up this would be in the pecking order. The last time these two clubs met, 0-0. Normally when they face each other, you'll see some goals. Maybe tonight's night. The Gold Cup final straight ahead from Foxborough. WNBA fans, don't miss this special offer. Now you can order WNBA season pass at the early bird price of two payments of $19.50. Just call the number on your screen to order. With WNBA season pass, you'll be able to see up to 60 games of thrilling WNBA action. Plus, you'll get NBA.com TV, the NBA's new 24-hour network. 
So don't miss this special offer. Call this number to order now. WNBA Season Pass is...